The recent release of a 524-page report by the Senate Intelligence Committee details the torture of terrorism suspects through a CIA program created and carried out in the aftermath of the September 11th attacks. The report describes acts against detainees held in the U.S.'s armed conflict against the Taliban and Al-Qaeda. I'm Travis Gasper, a law student at Texas A&M University School of Law, and joining us is Professor Sahar Aziz, an associate professor there and national security expert. Professor Aziz, uh, let's talk more uh, about this report that came out. Starting off with, how is torture defined under U.S. law? U.S. law prohibits torture under 18 U.S.C. 2340. Torture is defined as the intentional infliction or threatened infliction of severe physical or mental harm. That is a very vague definition, and that is essentially why there is a big dispute as to whether or not torture was conducted by the CIA, though at this point, the majority agrees that torture did occur, but there is a big disagreement as to what should be done about it. So speaking of that, what are the various stakeholders uh, asking for or uh, demanding in response to this report? The legal community is divided as to how to respond to the Senate report's findings. There are lawyers who are calling for aggressive prosecutions of not just line officers who actually conducted the torture, but high-level government officials, including Vice President Dick Cheney, um, his chief of staff, and lawyers within the Office for Legal Counsel within the Department of Justice, primarily because the CIA had went to the Department of Justice asking for legal guidance, and they had asked for a memoranda to authorize what they were doing because they were afraid that they would be prosecuted. So in response, the Office for Legal Counsel issued two memoranda. The first one effectively found that 10 specific techniques, including waterboarding, did not constitute torture and thus were not violations of U.S. and international law. They also issued a second one which broadly interpreted the U.S. President's uh, constitutional authorities and essentially argued that he has the inherent authority to violate the law in defense of national security. So both of those memos are going to be used as a defense by anyone who gets charged with such uh, prosecutions. Now some people, uh, including President Obama, are saying it's time to look forward and, and not look back. Um, what, what's the response to that? So that's the other side of the argument, which is that these prosecutions are not going to help the country move forward. They are not going to deter necessarily torture by future government officials and that they will criminalize politics and that the better option is to use this information that the Senate Intelligence Committee has found to heal the nation, to engage in something like a truth and reconciliation process and to ensure that it goes down in the history books as a black period in U.S. history that will not be repeated, that is a moral stain, and that that is a much more effective means of deterring torture as opposed to prosecuting specific individuals that will be perceived as simply a victor's justice of political witch hunting. We talked a lot about domestic prosecution. What about uh, at the international level? What are the chances of prosecution or accountability there? Well, torture has universal jurisdiction under international law. And so, in theory, any country could prosecute these individuals who are accused of engaging in the torture or conspire to engage in the torture. And so, there is a possibility, and it has already happened in Italy, it's happened in Poland, in Spain, where individual victims are filing lawsuits. And they are uh, filing them under the local law or under international law. And in fact, many CIA agents cannot go to certain parts of the world or else they will be uh, put in jail because they've been convicted absentia. Well, it sounds like we're only at the beginning of this discussion. Our thanks to Professor Sahar Aziz with Texas A&M University School of Law. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.